Good afternoon, everybody. Brian Martin here with you again. I received an email request to go through the data file that I mentioned yesterday in the uh, Affinity Publisher Data Merge uh, video. So why not? Uh, folks want to make sure that they're doing their files correctly and and how do I save them and what goes in the file, etc. So this is my data set. It's, I've only shown eight of the cards. I've hidden the rest and I've taken the names out because these are actually Baseball America cards, the actual Baseball America cards with the actual ratings that I turn into my own custom looking cards um, that I like that have the logos and the colors and, and stuff. So it, it you could do that yourself if you wanted to. It's a, it's probably a lot of work for n no reason since I already have the physical cards. <laughs> but anyway, this is how I do it. So here's how you lay it out. Um, and again, you may do this in any order that you want. My suggestion to you is lay it out in a in a logical manner. If you were if this were a sheet, let's assume there were no cards. Let's assume everything came on a team sheet. How would you lay a team sheet out in a readable format for you as the game player? So you want all of the, the things like the uniform number to be first, and then the name, and the team, and the position, and how they bat. And then the ratings will come in. Because it, it just it flows logically across the screen. So you can do whatever you want and put these in any order you want. It's how it's when you pick the fields in Affinity Publisher that determines where they appear on the card. This has nothing to do with it. I can move uniform number to the end, and as long as I put the uniform number in the upper left-hand corner of the card, it doesn't matter what column it is, it will find it based on the name. So your first column should be column names that make sense to you, that have meaning. This is uniform number, player name, team or city, uh, nickname of the team, Bayhawks, the player's position, how he bats, you could put throw if you wanted to put bats and throws. So put a THR column in here if you wanted to. Uh, bat one and bat two, of course, are the the, the potential uh, batting for when you have two potential qualities like champion hero or sad sack utility. Um, power one and power two. You can see how that works. Slugger and home run king. The K is the good eye whiffer. The BB is the eager patient. Then you have speed, experience, and fielding. So you can do that now. This is just a batting card. If you want to put the pictures on the same sheet and just have one data set for all cards, then you would add the, the pitching columns as well. And I don't have a pitching file done yet, um, but I have to work on it. So, but it would basically be pitching one, pitching two, because you can have two ratings as a pitcher. You'd have the control rating, you'd have uh, you'd have the strikeout rating and the control rating, because there's really only four things the pitcher can and they would also have speed experience and fielding so you would just add maybe the pitching columns maybe right after here and where they're blank that just means the player doesn't have that that quality and so it would appear as blank on the card and again if you don't put it on the card it doesn't appear on the card so there's no there's no problem having data in the set that doesn't appear on the card that's your choice when you get to uh, this column here um, you need to type in I'll just make this as wide as I can and slide this over if you're doing images you need to put the path to where the the uh, your program will go to find the image so it's the the drive letter then the, the master folder the subfolder the sub subfolder the sub sub subfolder the sub 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 subfolder and then uh, a slash and then the the, uh, the name of the file um, in this case bal.png is the Baltimore logo and when it gets to Cleveland I change that to CLE when it gets to Houston I change to HOU etc etc and you keep repeating values for every card that you wanted to appear on so notice that all these say Baltimore every single one of these guys plays for Baltimore that's fine every single one of these guys is in the USB hell season two so that would be one that that every player would have the images will only be for Baltimore players. The ones that say CLE.PNG will be only for the Cleveland players, and so on and so on. How you name the positions, you can use abbreviations. I use the full uh, the full wording, just because I like that better. Um, the name can be last name first, 
with a comma. It can be first name last. You can do what Keith does and put the first name with a capital letter and all small letters and then all caps for the second name. Or you can do it uh, all caps or you can do it traditional. Whatever you like. You can have a first name field and a last name field so that way you can separate it. Maybe have the first name in very tiny print and the last name in very very large print um, on separate lines. Um, some folks like that idea as well. So however you want to lay out the cards is up to you. So after you've got the data done and you'll notice I have clicked, I've done some double clicking here to, to widen the columns so you can see them. But when you save in comma separated value it puts everything back the way it was when we started. The columns will be this width which is 8.43 uh, 64 pixels wide. So how do you save to, to uh, when you open up a brand new workbook and you do a file save as. Don't do file save because if you do file save it will save it automatically as an Excel workbook. If you want to save it as a comma separated file you do file save as. You do card data dot um, demo dash CSV or whatever you want to call it and make sure you choose the CSV UTF comma separated value and click save. There's a file that already exists and the reason it exists is because I want to show you what happens when I open the demo. Notice how the data looks right now. This image column is 59.29 wide but watch what happens to its width when I open the CSV file back from fresh. And it saved the it saved it that way. Oh, don't worry about it. Um, I think I did something wrong. But um, yeah, I left it open. So let's reopen it fresh. See what, see what it did? It put it back to 8 point. Well, I moved it a little bit. Let's undo that. I put it, it put it back at 8.43. So it resets the column values. If you want to save it as an Excel file, do a file save as, choose Excel workbook, click save. I also named, I left the name the same and I'll do this. Let's say I want it to stay that way and have everything at the proper width. I'll do a file save. I'll close this and show you that by keeping this file name the same, I now have one that's comma separated value and one's Excel workbook. So what I should have done and what I can fix now is change this demo to Excel. And I saved it previously with all the column widths being different. And I did that so you could see that when it's an Excel workbook, it retains the column formatting. But in the CSV file, it does not. Data is the same. Everything's still there. That image still there. See, there's the whole there's the whole title. It's just it sets it to be a certain width for the CSV portion. So that's pretty much it. Set up a work. Open a blank workbook. Put your column headers in. Enter in your data. When you're done, save it either as a comma separated value dot CSV or as an Excel workbook dot XLSX if you're using the Office 6, uh, 2016 or higher version. Um, it can be XLS um, if it's uh, a version 1997 to 2003. So if you have an older version of Excel, you may want to uh, save it in the older version. But that's not all you do. Then you give it a proper name and you call on that in the Data Merge Manager in Affinity Publisher to link that data file to the card set. Easy as, easy as pie. So hopefully this was helpful to you and until the next time we meet to talk about card design or whatever, uh, this is Brian saying thanks for paying attention, listening, and thanks for, uh, thanks for asking the question. Hopefully this will be of value to somebody out there. So until next time, so long everybody.